This mini documentary is a continuation of the story of Cavalese, a small commune geographically located in the northeast corner of Italy among the soaring Dolomite Mountains. The town, along with the neighboring ski resort, Alpe Termis, was the site of one of the worst cable car disasters in history. In 1976, the aerial tramway that connected Cavalese with the mid-mountain station on Alpe Termis suffered a mechanical and structural failure, sending a loaded gondola plunging to the ground for more than 200 feet. 43 people were killed in the horrifying acts that made headlines around the world. In the subsequent decades, the town worked to recover and shed its association with the 1976 disaster. The town experienced a renaissance with a growing population of residents working to serve an even faster growing population of tourists. Through the early 1990s, the town would thrive, reclaiming its title as one of the top ski destinations in Italy. But that transformation would come to a sudden halt on the afternoon of February 3rd, 1998, in the shadow of an unimaginable tragedy. On February 3rd, 1998, the crew of an EA-6B Prowler aircraft of the United States Marine Corps took off from Aviano Air Force Base in Italy, embarking on a training mission through the Dolomite Mountains at low altitude. A normal low-level flight plan would call for the plane to maintain an altitude of at least 2,000 feet and a speed of no more than 450 knots, which was in line with military safety regulations. However, during the briefing, a minimum altitude of just 1,000 feet was set forth as the guideline. The crew joked and laughed in lighthearted conversation as they turned up the engines, peeled down the runway, and became airborne. First in command was Captain Richard J. Ashby, who at just 30 years old, would need to complete this one last mission in order to receive a coveted promotion. Ashby was accompanied by his navigator, Captain Joseph Schweitzer, and crewman Chandler Seagraves and William Rainey. The flight was planned the month prior at an altitude of just 1,000 feet. As the aircraft soared over the undulating topography across the region, Playful banter between the four aviators continued. One of them, with a video camera, was recording, capturing the group's antics while on flight. With the crew encouraging one another, informality quickly became recklessness. Captain Richard Ashby began performing risky maneuvers, increasing speed well beyond the 450 knot guidance, and flying well below even the erroneous minimum altitude of 1,000 feet. The aircraft soon entered a mountainous region, flying at a dangerously low altitude, weaving through valleys and flying over small villages set among the peaks. Just after 3 p.m. local time, the aircraft would come upon a small, snowy village packed with tourists. As the plane flew over the village, the crew felt a sudden, violent jolt concurrent with a loud thud. The aircraft had come into contact with something. The crew was stunned, not knowing what they had just hit. Could it have been a large bird, perhaps? What was clear is that whatever it was took a toll on the aircraft. One of the crewmen observed an enormous gash in the right side of one of the wings, and looking back, noticed a small, distant, yellow box falling to the ground. Though the plane's wing and tail were damaged, the crew managed to land safely back at Aviano Air Force Base. Soon, it became clear that the aircraft had struck an aerial cable car line. The plane's wing had come into contact 
with the support cables at an altitude of just 350 feet, severing them and sending the gondola with 20 passengers on board plummeting to the ground. There were no survivors. An official investigation into the cause of the crash uncovered a web of lies. In an effort to get rid of evidence, the videotape was destroyed. During the trial, the crew denied responsibility, maintaining that their altimeter was faulty, among other excuses. In March 1999, both Ashby and Schweitzer were acquitted by a U.S. court, and all manslaughter charges were dropped. The Italian public was outraged, alongside all of the other countries represented in the list of casualties, including Germany, Belgium, Poland, Austria, and the Netherlands. After the first trial, evidence of the destroyed videotape would surface and precipitate a second trial that would ultimately hold Ashby and Schweitzer accountable for obstruction of justice. Both would be discharged from service, and Ashby would ultimately serve just four and a half months of a six-month prison sentence, released for good behavior. The U.S. would issue an official apology to Italy and offered monetary compensation to the victims' families. However, the incident would significantly strain relations between the two countries. The incident to this day has been broadly acknowledged by Italians and Europeans not as an accident, but instead as a massacre. It's been more than 20 years since this horrific tragedy. As an example of human resilience, the commune of Cavalese would move on and continue to build toward a bright future, leaving behind a very dark legacy. The fact that two major cable car disasters could impact the same town in the same manner, but under such different circumstances, is truly unfathomable. We can only hope that lessons have been learned and measures have been implemented to mitigate the risk of a similar tragedy in the future. My name is Scott, and thank you so much for watching. We're a group of curious and passionate humans, creating documentary style content for those who share our curiosity, ask questions, and seek to dig deeper in a world where almost everything isn't quite what it seems. We are Mystery Syndicate. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and visit our website at www.mysterysyndicate.com. And don't forget to like our videos and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. From all of us at Mystery Syndicate, thank you again. We sincerely appreciate your support.